Pastor. Praise the Lord. If you're expecting multiple miracles, I said praise the Lord. Miracle of salvation tonight. Miracle of healing tonight. A miracle of deliverance tonight. And you will be the partaker in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you and bless your name. How great you are, mighty, powerful, omnipotent, able to do all things. Lord, we come tonight with empty cups. Fill our cups in Jesus' name. Bless everyone without exception. The young, the old, the newcomers, the old timers, Everyone, those who are outside the kingdom, Lord, with your gentle love, bring them in. Amen. Those who are in the kingdom already, establish them. Amen. Bless everyone today, here, there, everywhere, online, radio, television, everyone, everywhere, all over the world. Your blessings abundant in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Your amen is good tonight. I love it. Give me another amen. You can see that now in the blessing of the Lord. What we've been talking about, and we're here because of the power that never fails connected with that power that never fails is the grace the grace that never fails the name the name that never fails when you think about what we have what we have in christ the power never fails the promise never fails the name never fails and the grace of God available for you, available for everyone. That grace will not run dry in your life. Tonight, I'm talking to you on the supernatural possibilities of God's amazing grace. Great possibilities. Supernatural possibilities. Uncountable supernatural possibilities of God's amazing grace. Look at Acts chapter 4 and we're reading from verse 12. It says, neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Now, that word saved and the word salvation. We have saved. That's a word of action coming from God, coming to man. And it's what God does. Save. Now, when He has saved us, we say He has given us salvation. Now, salvation is an all encompassing word. What I mean by that is salvation. It's like a tree with many, many branches and with many fruits. And when it says, neither is there salvation in any other, that salvation is wide, it's broad, it's deep, and it's I, that salvation from generation to generation, that salvation from one nation to another nation, that salvation from one man to another man, there, neither is there salvation. Inside that salvation, there is the forgiveness of sin. Inside that salvation, there is recovery from slavery. We have been, we have been slaves and we were under the dominion of the slave master. Under that salvation, we have recovery from sickness. 
darkness was sick and it, it, it tells us there is no salvation neither is there salvation neither is there forgiveness neither is there freedom neither is there recovery neither is there healing neither is there deliverance neither is there joy and happiness forever and ever in any other name for there is no other name there is none other none other name under heaven given among men 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 in general white men black men brown men yellow men what i'm saying men in any country no salvation no freedom no recovery there is no supernatural deliverance in any other name anywhere under the sun whereby we must be saved whereby we must be healed whereby we must be redeemed whereby we must be recovered whereby we must be set free everything we need salvation now salvation through life salvation as we enter into the heavenly kingdom neither is there salvation total salvation composite salvation supernatural salvation heaven made salvation neither is there salvation in any other for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved that name is given to you today salvation comes to you today salvation for your spirit salvation for your soul salvation for your body salvation for you now and salvation for you through life and salvation that makes you enter into eternity look at verse 33 of that same chapter 4 it says and with great power the power that never fails with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and great grace, the grace that never fails. It flows everywhere. It gets to you, it gets to me, it gets to everyone. And whatever grace can do, think about that. Whatever grace can do, will do for you even tonight in Jesus' name. The grace that never fails, the power that never fails, the name that never fails, great grace was upon them all. All. I said all. Praise the Lord, you are one of the all. The air that will breathe for all. Whether you're on this side of the fence, on this side of the wall, the air we breathe is for all. The sun that shines for all. Whether you are there or here, and the grace like the air he gives us, and we don't pay for that like the sun and sunshine we don't pay for that the grace of god great grace supernatural grace and the grace that does not make any discrimination that comes to everyone grace great grace upon them all tonight the supernatural possibilities of god's amazing grace three things we're looking at look at number one there number one great salvation through god's abundant grace number two good sight and good strength through god's amazing grace number three grateful sonship through god's assuring grace one abundant grace two amazing grace three assuring grace one great salvation great salvation through god's abundant 
grace. We're looking at First Timothy chapter 1. And I'm reading from verse 13. First Timothy chapter 1. Reading from verse 13. It said, Who was before a blasphemer? Here is Saul transformed to become Paul. Here is Saul whose nature was changed and he became Paul. Here is Saul on the dark side of life. And he came to the bright side of life and he became Paul. He said, can I tell you about the grace of God? so abundant he said if the grace of god were to be measured and the grace of god were to be doled out giving out but it's been exhausted by the time i get to the line there's a place i go aside because the grace is so limited and if we serve People like you, people who are better than you, will not be able to get of that grace. But he said, you see, the grace of God is unlimited. You see, the grace of God is inexhaustible. You see, the grace of God is impartial. You see, the grace of God is immeasurable, abundant. And because of that, he says, think about me. If I could have the grace of God of all people, you will have the grace of God. I'm talking to somebody there. I say today, wherever you are coming from, whatever you have done, whatever deed or pit you put yourself into, maybe your, your hands are soiled. Maybe your feet, they are soiled. Maybe your body, you are soiled. And everything, and the devil can point to the mark of the Adamic nature, Adamic practice in your life. It says, grace has come tonight to you for me for everyone grace has come say welcome say welcome you welcome grace in your life salvation will come to you says who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious if somebody has only one of those marks that's enough to condemn him a blasphemer nothing else that's enough a persecutor persecuting good people that good people should not do good they should rather do evil that's enough to condemn the man injurious a person dangerous on the street and dangerous to the community and dangerous to everyone is dangerous he was dangerous to his tribe he was dangerous to a countryman he was dangerous to jews like him who became believers he was dangerous to the gentiles he was dangerous to everyone he said but look at that but he said, you would have expected I should have been judged, but you would have expected I should have been condemned, but you should have expected I shouldn't be alive talking. I shouldn't be happy. I shouldn't have joy. I shouldn't have the hope of heaven. He said, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. Look at verse 14. In verse 14 it says, and the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. The grace of our God was exceeding abundant. How can I explain that to you? What he's saying is, it's as wide as the ocean. It's as deep as the sea. And anyone you dive into that sea, it will submerge you. It will cover you up. And it's saying the grace of God is abundant, wide and deep. And then it says if you plunge into that grace of God, it will submerge you and cover you and cleanse away every sin you ever committed in your life. I thought you would say amen. Yeah. 
He says, the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant. Now, Paul is enough. If you say abundant, Paul the apostle said, no, I need to add another qualifying word. Exceedingly abundant with faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. Look at verse 15. It says this. Is a faithful saying. This is a faithful saying. Whenever the Jewish writers, the Jewish authors, whenever they said that, and they said, This is a faithful saying, it means it's a saying. It's like an idiom, it's like an idea that everybody knows that this is true carry it anywhere say it in any class say it in any auditorium say it anywhere this is a faithful saying that everyone can say yes i know that is true everyone hearing for the first time will say that must be true anyone thinking about it applying it to himself and to herself will say yes i know even the angels will affirm yes this is true this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation it says all you have to accept is what i come to tell you now worthy of all acceptation that christ jesus came into the world to save sinners christ jesus came into the world to save sinners christ jesus came into our world and he comes into your world and he comes into your tribe and he comes into your community and he wants to do just one thing to save sinners remember once again that word save to save to rescue to save, to transform, to save, to set free, to save, to break the yoke, to save, to recover, to save, to make you a new man, a new woman. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and then he said, of whom I am chief. He said, when all the, all the sinners in the world, when they line up and I come, all the sinners will say, take your place. You are the chief of sinners. Stay in front. Number one, sinner. Number one, blasphemer. Number one, persecutor. Number one, injurious man. The chief of sinners. And yet, he got saved tonight no matter what you have done he will save you he will forgive you he will recover you it will turn your life around look at verse 16 it says in verse 16 how be it for this cause i obtained mercy i obtained mercy now uh, there are two words i need to clear up for you there is one word attain attain when you try when you struggle when you climb when you exercise yourself when you expend energy and you get somewhere you attain you'll say i tried I studied, I spent sleepless nights, and I struggled. I turned over a new leaf. I did my very best. Look at what I've got now. I attained. That's another word. Obtain, obtain. Obtain not your effort, not your strength, not your power. You just stretch out your hand, and then you're given everything you need. You don't say, I attain this one. I work for this one. I serve for this one. I paid for this one. No, you obtain. You don't attain. Salvation is so costly, you cannot attain. Salvation is so high, it's so deep, it's so wide, you cannot attain. But you can come like a beggar 
you can come and stretch out your empty hand, the hand of faith, and say, I obtain. And that's what we get. The people who are trying and the people who are struggling and the people who are working, they never get it because they're trying to attain. They're trying to attain. But when you come and you say nothing in my hands I bring simply to the cross I cling. I obtain. And Paul the apostle said he obtained mercy that in me force Jesus Christ my show forth all long suffering all long suffering pay attention that's why those who do evil that's why the hammer does not come from heaven and strike them dead you know some people will say you know i've been sinning i've been doing evil and i've been getting here getting there and i'm looking for that god that will use heaven's hammer and knock my head and kill me god is not like that long suffering he'll wait for you he's been waiting and he's waited until this night in his long suffering that everything you have ever done he said aren't you tired aren't you weary aren't you fed up with all those bad things you have been doing and you have been spoiling your life and you degrade yourself aren't you tired don't you want a change don't you want happiness and joy and relief and forgiveness to say yes lord i'm tired of that way because it's not yielding good for you said that's why i've been waiting for you because of his long suffering for a pattern to them we shall hereafter believe on him to live everlasting it's your opportunity tonight you are calm say i come and grace will reach you there tonight in jesus name now look at acts chapter 15 verse 11 i want to show you something there acts 15 verse 11 but we believe that through the grace of the lord jesus christ grace grace the grace that never fails like the power that never fails here peter was talking and he said we believe that through the grace of the lord jesus christ we the jews shall be saved even as they the gentiles the same water in the ocean that flows everywhere Africans can drink of that water. Asians can drink of that water. Americans can drink of that water. Europeans can drink of that water. Everyone, everyone. I know we understand. We use the pipe uh, you know, so as to get the water from the ocean from where it is and get it to us. While the water is not contaminated by, you know, the, the things that people do and the things that people pour into the water water it is pure and then we bring it in and it satisfies us the same thing with the grace of god the grace of god like a white ocean like a white and deep sea that grace of god is available until man puts some their own ideas and opinions into that grace of god and they shrink that grace of god their ideas their understanding their tribal sentiments will put some things on that grace of God that before it comes now people think they have to pay for that how can you just have the grace like that don't you know you must be this and this and that but the grace of God without any infiltration of the ideologies of men is that pure grace that is coming to you tonight and it's for every nation for the Jewish nation and for the Gentile nation for the people that were the descendants directly of Abraham 
Abraham and for the people that grew up on the other side of the family of Abraham for everyone. It says we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. And tonight salvation has come. Deliverance has come. Freedom has come. Recovery has come. That's abundant grace. You'll have your share. I said you'll have your share. There, you will have your share. Abundant grace, whatever, wherever you are or you have done, that grace will cover you. Save you. Forgive you. Set you free. Me. Me. Will set me free. You'll obtain. Don't try to attain. You obtain free of charge. The grace of God. Let's come to number two here. Number two. We're looking at good sight. Good strength. Through God's amazing grace. God's amazing grace. What does that mean? You look at something. How can this happen? You say, I am amazed. I am surprised. I am, <laughs> I don't want to use the word. You know, sometimes somebody becomes so astonished that he says, I am flabbergasted. I told you I didn't want to use the word because it's a jaw-breaking word. But all the same, amazed. You'll be amazed tonight. Yeah. Heaven will open for you. And then you'll see me, of all people, I'm amazed. And then forgiveness will come. Even things you couldn't forgive yourself about, you say, I, I won't even talk about it. I won't even ask for forgiveness because they, how could I do that? You'll be amazed tonight. The Lord will forgive you. The things that your neighbors will not forgive, the things that even the pastor of your church will say, now, this is going too far. There is love. I want you to love everybody. But you are injurious to the community anywhere you are. And they say, we well, don't even, don't come and pray. Don't come and beg because, and then they throw you out. Because they feel that you have gone too far. You'll be amazed tonight that what man or woman will not forgive, God will forgive. I'm waiting for a good amen. Amen. What church and society will not forgive? You'll be amazed tonight. The Lord will forgive you. And he will, you know, even the forgiveness we have from people, when they forgive us, that's all they can do. They say, okay, okay, you're pleading, okay, you're crying, okay, you're sorry, we'll forgive you. But there's something they cannot do. They cannot give us the power not to do that thing again. They cannot give us the strength not to do that again. They cannot stand between us and the temptation that made us to do that thing the first time. But the forgiveness of God comes with strength comes with good understanding comes with power that you will have the grace the strength the power and the love of God that never fails in your life tonight that power that love will never fail and then you'll have good sight the Lord will open the eyes of the blind today. You will have good strength. If you were weak and anemic and you were totally impotent and paralyzed, strength will come to you tonight. And then you will rise up. You will walk in Jesus' name. Good sight and good strength through God's amazing grace. Look at Mark. Chapter 10, I'm reading from verse 46. And they came to Jericho. 
They came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and the great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, such by the west high side, by the highway side, begging. Look at verse 47. In verse 47, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, when he heard that he saw Jesus of Nazareth, who is Jesus of Nazareth? The Son of God, the Savior of the world that never rejected anyone. The rich, the powerful, the mighty deliverer that came from heaven that never belittled anyone. We're talking about the gracious one that came and the solution to the problem of everyone on earth was in his hand and he never discriminated against anyone nobody like that from the foundation of this world until that time until this time he heard that it was jesus of nazareth and he began to cry out and say jesus thou son of david have mercy on me let me remind you again two words mercy marriage a man knew. If we talk of education, he didn't have, he didn't marriage. If we talk of a dignified man, having strength, having ability, he didn't have that, no marriage. If we talk of connections, that a man will say, I know Mr. So-and-so, the richest man in town. I know Mrs. So-and-so, the most dignified woman in town. The man did not have that. He did not have marriage. Actually, no one has marriage with heaven. Jesus Christ came from heaven. And money does not attract him. And the things of this world, they, they do nothing to him. Because he created the universe. A person that created the universe, a piece of stone is nothing to him. And because of that, there's nothing you can bring and say, Jesus, look at me. I come to give you Naira. Uh, Naira does not have any value to him. And dollars and pounds, marriage, I married this. No, mercy. Somebody shout mercy. And that's what we have tonight. You don't have marriage, but you have mercy. And the mercy of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting. And that mercy is coming upon your life. If, if you sit back there and you say, I'm a church man, uh -huh. I'm a church woman. If you say, I've been baptized as an infant. If you say, I take the Holy Communion. I've gone to Jerusalem. I drank out of River Jordan. And this and this. I have the certificate of ordination on my wall. You're talking of marriage. And marriage doesn't count. When you come to the Lord, all you can ask for, like Paul the Apostle, a great apostle. He didn't talk of Mary. He talked about the mercy of God. That's why as you come today, mercy will reach you there. Mercy will touch you there. Mercy will deliver you there tonight in Jesus' name. He said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look at verse 48. In verse 48, and many charged him that he should hold his peace. Keep quiet. They said, there are people who don't have peace. 
And you don't want other people to have peace. And so, when you're asking for peace from the Prince of Peace, what they don't have, they don't want you to have. There are people that do not have forgiveness. And when you're asking for forgiveness and joy and peace and life, exciting and eternal, they don't have, so they want to shut you up. There are people that don't have healing or deliverance, and you want healing, and they know that if you get to that Jesus today, instantaneously, He'll give you that uh, healing and deliverance they don't have, they don't want others to have. So they said, shut up. Hold your peace. What are you asking for mercy? What are you asking? You know you don't have marriage. You know you cannot attain. And you're asking for mercy. Nobody will shut you up. The amen is too low. Let me tell you one secret you may not know. Satan is called the devil. He has lost heaven because he was there at the archangel, Lucifer. Eventually he rebelled and he took one third of the angels with him. In the rebellion, he was cast out and now Hell fire is prepared for Satan and his angels. And he looks at man that Jesus Christ has come to take man from the earth to heaven. And whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord will be saved. His name will be in the book of life. He'll get to heaven. And so Satan says, where I cannot get to, look at that poor man, look at that ordinary woman, look at that boy, look at that girl, is going to get to heaven where he could not get to. Therefore, he will himself or by his evil spirit or by the men that are working for him tell the people that want to get to heaven to shut up. He has men in authority. He has men of power. He has women of dignity. He has women and men that are popular and they will use their popularity and say shut up. It's not them. It's the Satan is to get him them who is not going to get to heaven and he wants you to shut up. You will not shut up. Amen. When the Lord says, okay, raise up your hand now and if you want Jesus as your savior, that's the only name that can save you. There'll be, it'll come, a whisper in your mind there. Don't do it today because he's not going there and he's jealous of you that you are going there. I am going to heaven. I am going to heaven. And therefore Satan will not shut you up. Am I talking to somebody here tonight? Where is the person I'm talking to there? You will get to heaven. Mercy will come to you. But when they told him, hold your peace, he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look at verse 49. In verse 49, and Jesus stood still and he commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Go, Be of good comfort, rise, he calleth thee. And I come to tell you tonight, be of good comfort, be happy, be joyful. Christ is calling you. Christ is going to touch you. Christ is going to forgive you. And then in verse 50, in verse 50 we're told, and he casting away his garment rose and came to Jesus. You know, if you're not under somebody's skin, 
if you don't get into their mind, you will not be able to interpret their actions. You know, sometimes we judge people because we are trying to uh, judge their action. Why is he standing like that? Why is he kneeling like that? Why is he sitting down like that? Why is he shouting like that? We judge people because we're not inside them. We don't know why they're doing what they're doing. If you knew what they're doing, you'll not condemn anyone. If you know the way they are thinking, if you know the direction they are going, you will not judge anyone or criticize anyone. You will not criticize anybody anymore. I said you will not criticize anybody anymore. Now, I will not criticize but I'm yours. I'm going to ask him now. But I'm yours. Jesus didn't say cast away your garment. What Jesus said is call him let him come to me. Why? Are you behaving? Is that not fanatical? And then you take your garment and you throw Throw it away. He said, no, it's not fanatical. Okay, tell me. That garment, you know, the people who are blind, that's the kind of dress they wear. Like, for example, now if you see a traffic man, there's something he wears when he stands on the road and the car is coming and light shines on that garment. It will spot it up very clearly. It's a special garment and the blind people at that time, they wore that kind of special dress so that whoever saw them will say okay that's a blind man make way for him to pass that's a blind man tell him there's a ditch here because he cannot see but the man when they say Jesus is calling you he said mercy has come for me and mercy has come for you he said my sight has come his, his eyes was he blind but he said Jesus the one that opens the eyes of the blind is calling you the one that heals the sick is calling you. The one that works miracle is calling you. He said, I'm going to the miracle worker. I'm going to the one that will open my eyes and therefore the garment that showed that he was blind. He said, I will not need this garment, the identification of a blind man anymore. That's why he cast away his garment and he rose and came to Jesus. He was sure, like you're sure tonight, mercy has come for you. Healing has come for you. Deliverance has come for you. And your strength has come in Jesus' name. Look at verse 51. In verse 51, Jesus answered and said unto him, What wilt thou that I should do unto thee? What do you want? You're asking for mercy. Mercy is broad. Mercy is wide. There's mercy for your spirit. There's mercy for your soul. There's mercy for your body. There's mercy for every sickness. And there is mercy for every need of your life. Tell me, which area of mercy do you need? That's why you need to tell the Lord. Mercy for forgiveness. If that's what you want, you tell him. Mercy for total freedom. You tell him. Mercy for your healing. You tell him tonight is your night. And he will do it for you in Jesus' name. And the blind man said unto him, Lord, don't go further. Lord, he said, I have come. Before I came to see you today and to know you today, my thoughts controlled me. And my anger against the world controlled me. I was angry with the world. Why am I blind? Why? That one passed. He didn't give me anything. Anger controlled me. Anger was his Lord. And his feeling was his Lord. The climate, the atmosphere was his Lord. He said, I now change masters. I change lords. The one 
who can save me is my Lord now. The one who can forgive me is my Lord now. The one who can open my blind eyes is my Lord now. He said, Lord, he called him Lord. If you will call him Lord, and you recognize he died for you, and he rose from the dead, and the heavenly Father has made him Lord and Savior for the whole world, and you accept him Lord tonight, your sins are forgiven. Your guilt taken away. And your problem and your load, everything gone tonight in Jesus' name. He said, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Look at verse 52 there. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. Thy faith? What is the faith? You see, when the man was coming, I told you now, he was still blind, but he was coming to the Lord, and he knew that the Lord will open his blind eyes. That's why he threw the garment away. It's the action that showed his faith. I'm going to the Lord. I make him Lord of my life and Lord of my situation and Lord of my existence. And because I'm going to him and I know he will work the miracle in my life. That the reason he threw the garment away will show the faith by the action. Because faith without works, without corresponding action, is dead. Like the body without the spirit is dead. So faith without action, faith without works, faith without something demonstrable that we do, that shows we believe that God is going to answer prayer that is dead, but the man, his faith came alive. His faith was active, and it says, thy faith has made thee whole. And immediately, he received a sight. He received a sight. I said he received the sight. Now, this man just opened his eyes and he saw Jesus and he saw the crowd and he saw Peter and he saw the disciples. If he looked back a few steps, he will see the garment he dropped. But you know, the last line here says, and he followed Jesus in the way. He didn't go back to the garbage that he threw down. You see, when you come to the Lord, as you are coming, he's going to save me today. He's going to forgive me today. The cigarettes you throw away in your mind. The bottles of beer, you throw them away. All the alcohol, you throw everything away. Everything that showed the identifying mark of the sinner you throw that away and now forgiveness comes your eyes are open and new life comes to you you will not go back to the garbage that you dropped you will not go back to the evil things you are doing now you follow jesus in the way which way the way you know the way that jesus goes in the way to heaven you see to Jerusalem, yes, don't you understand? There's earthly Jerusalem, there's heavenly Jerusalem, and he said, I came from heaven and I go back to my father. And the man followed him in the way. You are the next. I said, You are the next. The man received his sight. Maybe you are not blind. Whatever the problem, you are going to receive your healing. You are going to receive your deliverance. You are going to receive your miracle. Amen. Uh, let me let, let me show you some uh, just just two people today they just like you now like where you are that's how they came that's how they search and they received their miracle congratulations for you there 
I said, congratulations for you there. You will receive in Jesus' name. Number one is Mrs. Happy. You can tell even from the need, Mrs. Happy, how the Lord changed things. Let her talk to you by herself. Mrs. Happy, talk. And let's hear what the Lord has done for you. happy Augustine or whatever. So what happened to me first, I accept in this GCK uh, Global Crusade, I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior, which I'm following because I really thank God for that. And the second one, I was diagnosed with, I have a pregnancy, so I went for a hospital for a test. They say I have a fibro, which the doctor was telling me that the fibro was disturbing the baby in the stomach. So I was worried. Uh, I, I was trusting God for healing. Then Daddy mentioned my case. He said fibro, but during the prayer, he said fibro disappeared. Particularly, I keep to it and I believe that God will heal me. And God did that for me. So I went on after that, I went for a test. So when I went for the test, the doctor now told me that, Madam, there's no fibro again. I was like, I don't understand there's no fibro. I was like, but you're the one that they test me that there was fibro. I say, okay, my God has done it for me. So fibro disappeared, and this is my baby, as you can see. It's a wonderful and a blessing to me. God bless you, Daddy. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. You'll be happy tonight. Joyful tonight. Excited tonight in Jesus' name. I have the second one, Mr. John. It's a real serious case. It was, but now things turned around like your life tonight. Things will turn around. Let's listen to Mr. John talking to us now. My name is John Onebu. I'll be having issue of pie. If I sit down, my body will be soak. I always put pampas. Every time, if you know see tissue, you see pampas with me. So I would, my radio and my house that day, I'm hearing preaching, 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 our daddy, Kumuyi, preaching the word of God. He mentioned that anywhere you have problem, you should touch, lay your hands there. And I'm, I'm like, it's only lying down. I can't sit as I sit. Now that day I touch, I pray that I collect the blessing. My body moves, be like, say, I feel, I feel like to poo. So I now run to the toilet. What I shit out is thick blood. So since that day till now, the pie go away from me. I am Dr. Samuel Elora Udovi, a consultant a radiologist, a medical doctor. The case of uh, a pile, medically we call it uh, hemorrhoids. And um, that hemorrhoids is one of the, uh, it's a dangerous uh, disease, it can actually lead to death. To say he was healed without medication, that one is beyond medical uh, conception. And I want to give God glory, the Alpha and Omega, for keeping me alive since 1998. I say bless and honor be unto his wonderful holy name and bless the ministry that God used and healed me. More progress for the ministry, more souls will come. Amen. As he connected with the power just tonight, your time has come. Amen. Quickly now, point number three. Number three, grateful sonship through God's assuring grace. Assuring grace. You know, when people come, they want to get something. Will I, will I not tonight? Assuring grace. Will it come to me or will it elude me, escape me tonight? Assuring grace, wherever you are, 
whoever you are there's assurance from heaven tonight that the grace of God available for everyone that grace will be available for you right now the Lord will touch your life the Lord will forgive you and the Lord will heal you any problem any challenge tonight you are free in Jesus name look at John John chapter 1 verse 12 but as many as received him it's in our hand as many as received him they received not an itch not a dogma they receive not an age an inanimate object they receive him the one that is full of love and full of mercy and full of grace and he has mercy for everyone love for everyone grace for everyone as many as received him to them he gave power the power that never fails, the authority that never fails, he gave them power to become the sons of God, to become, that's transformation, to become, that's a great change. What you want not before, you're like maybe a scrap of paper to be thrown away but now it transforms that paper it is not profitable and useful because now you become a child of God even to them that believe on his name believe on his name look at verse 16 in verse 16 and of his fullness have we all received grace for grace of his fullness deep high wide broad it says of the fullness the fullness of grace think about the grace of god that appeared to paul to saul he became paul to zacchaeus and think about the grace that came to the worst of human beings that grace came to them and now you come and receive grace for grace grace upon grace salvation by grace healing by grace deliverance by grace recovery by grace deliverance and total emancipation by grace grace for grace that grace is waiting for you I said that grace is waiting for you. And you're there. That grace is waiting enough for you. Christ has paid the price. We don't need to struggle anymore to attain. We don't need to try anymore to qualify ourselves. He has qualified us. Every sinner is salvation is available for every sinner healing is available for every sick one and deliverance is available for everyone oppressed and tormented whosoever will call on the name of the lord will be saved you have it tonight i said you have it tonight it's about an eyes closed it's about an eyes closed why do I say eyes closed? When well, you close your eyes, you're now all by yourself. You cannot see anyone saying, shut up. Don't do that. Don't do that. All you have now is your mind and your heart. And you can take a decision with that heart and with that mind. And then you can open the inner eye and say, Jesus, you are now my Lord. You want him to be your Lord tonight, your Savior tonight, so that all your sins are taken away. Wherever you are, raise up that hand and say, Lord Jesus, I'm here. Thank 
Thank you. God bless you there. Thank you. God bless you there. Thank you very much. God bless you there. The forgiveness of the Lord is coming out. The salvation of the Lord is coming now. And all the things, all the good, good things in that salvation, the forgiveness and the freedom and the joy of salvation and the peace of salvation and the freedom that comes with that salvation is coming to you right now. Raise up that and raise up that and anywhere you are, you want that salvation, you want that forgiveness, you want that peace of mind and you're raising up your hand, please stand up and we're going to pray together after that final amen. It's not by feeling, it's not by trying, it's by trusting. You trust him that what he said he will do. He has done it for me. Raise up your hand anywhere you are. If you are listening over the radio, you can raise up your hand and stand up. If you are watching over the television, you can raise up your hand and stand up. If you are watching on your phone, anywhere you are, if you use any social media, Zoom or uh, whatever, you, you raise up your hand and you stand up now. The salvation of the Lord and the mercy of God is coming to you right now. Stand up. As you stand up, tell the Lord there, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm a sinner. I want your forgiveness and I want your grace. Thank you, Lord. I know you've done it because the grace of God, the mercy of God will not discriminate, will not be partial. You give everyone and you give me now. Lord, I believe and I receive Christ as my personal savior. I'm going to pray with you now, Father, in the name of Jesus. We thank you because of your compassion, because of your long suffering. You've waited until this time, and you are now saying, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Lord, all these here, all these over there, everywhere, they have indicated they want your forgiveness and your freedom and your grace and your mercy see save them in jesus name let the joy of salvation come to them now and the freedom and the grace of god come upon every life right now thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray it is done i said it is done you are saved Say, I am saved. Keep on standing. Our members of the choir, our counselors, they are there and uh, they will give you a slip to feel. And as you do that, then I will come back a few minutes now. We we'll give for the counseling. I'll come back and pray for you. Your healing, your deliverance is coming to you shortly. We we'll call on our um, moderating overseer to lead us in this counseling period. Counselors, please go around, spread yourselves inside the crowd, to the left, to the right, the extreme side of wing three. And if you have given your life to Christ as a new convert, you have given your life to Christ. You're a very important person. I celebrate with you. Because your name is now in the book of life. Now, if you are on radio or on television, just as the man of God said, salvation has come to you right there. And now you are a new creature. Please, we need your details so that we can pray along with you. And if you're watching online, there's a link displayed there. gckhq.org slash connect. Click it, please. And fill the form so we can assist you 
in your new walk with Christ. Like I said earlier, if you are listening on radio or television, I rejoice with you. Please send your name and phone number and also your location to this WhatsApp number I'm going to tell you now. Plus 234-915-444-9263. I will take it again. Plus 234-915-44-9263. Now I have very important news for you. There will be a special meeting. We call it Lunch Hour with Jesus. And it's for you, our VIPs. Those who have, just given, who have just given their lives to Christ now. By 3 p.m., by the classroom by my right hand side here, in the Alpha location, join us there and you'll be blessed. For those of you online, there will be a special online banquet for all of you. It's holding Sunday, 4th December, 2022. We'll send you more details, please. Listen to me. Our pastor will be delighted to have you join this special banquet. And for those of us in Yola, there's Yola Believers Banquet on that same Sunday, 4th December, 2022. At Deeper Life Bible Church Headquarters, Popular Street, Old Jerry. 3 p.m. is the time, please. Now, counselors, let's know the progress. Because we're eager to see miracles tonight. Yesterday, as I told you, was part one. Today, there'll be explosion of miracles. If you have somebody far away, connect them now on phone when our Father in the Lord comes up to appreciate, that means to, to pray. And you'll see miracles happening. You will testify tonight. If you believe what I said, let me hear your amen. amen. Uh, your amen is law. Amen. A bigger miracle, amen. Amen. Is going to happen. Tell your neighbor, I'm the next to testify. <laughs> now I want you to begin to talk to God and tell the Lord, tell the Lord what that your problem is. Build your faith now. As the man of God comes and he says the final amen, that's it. You have your miracle, and you are next to testify. I rejoice with you indeed. Counselors, are you ready? We are eager for miracles tonight. Counselors, hurry up. Get the full information. Don't miss out anything. Because that salvation is very, very important. Now, counselors will be giving you a special package from our Father. That's for you that have just given your life to Christ. You are a VIP. And after the counselors are done with you, please join others in prayer for your miracles. You heard about happy just now. She received salvation and she got her miracle. That double dose is yours tonight. So after you are done with the counselors, 
Just talk to God about your problem. And you will receive your own miracle. Counselors, by my left, I want to see signal now. To my left, if you are true, you raise the flag to my left, to the front. Our supervisors, please raise the flag if you are true. Then, to the right, in wing three. Far back between wing two and wing three, and wing three, if you have uh, completed the counseling, can you please raise the flag? Okay, I can see the flag here at the back in front of me. How about to my left? Hurry up, but take all the details. Counselors, remain with the people so that as the miracles happen, you bring them for testimonies. Remain with the people, counselors. To my right. All right. At far back, the open feet in between wing two and wing three. We are waiting for you. The people on the open feet between wing two and wing three. Can somebody please show me a sign? Hurry up, but take all the details. Please, can I see any sign? Our counselors in the open field, we are waiting for you. Counselors, remain with the people when you are through with the counseling. Can I have a sign from the open field between wing two and wing three? We are waiting for you. And uh, those of you online still connected, make sure you're also praying because you receive your miracles tonight. You will have online testimony. Testimony everywhere tonight. Counselors, please, I need, I need confirmation now, especially from the open feet between wing two and wing three. Our supervisors, can you please uh, check up? And if they are true, you raise the flag and let me see the sign. Let me see the sign from the far back, the open feet. We are waiting for you. Counselors, don't, don't forget those towards the gate. Those sitting towards the gate, in the open feet. Also check up with them. Councillors, please hurry up. 
but take all the details. Praise the Lord. Now rise up now as our Father and the Lord comes up for miracle prayer. It's your turn to receive. Say, it's my turn to receive. Say, you're welcome, sir. Thank you. Praise the Lord. It's your turn. What are you? It's coming your way. Whatever the challenge, whatever the sickness, whatever load you carry, the Lord is going to take everything away right now. All you need to do, you raise up your hands so you identify, I need healing, deliverance, miracle, signs and wonders. Then you lay the other hand on yourself where you have the problem. Then after the final amen checkup, the miracle will be there. Raise up that hand. Lay the other hand where you have the challenge. Believe, and it's done. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray, Lord, for everyone. Everyone here at the Alpha location. Everyone, everywhere, in every congregation, every country, every nation. I pray for those who are linked up over the radio, over the television. Everyone virtually. Lord, I pray, touch them, grant them the miracle now in Jesus' name. Every expectation become realization now. Performance in every life. Operation of the Spirit in every life. Heal everyone. Open the blind eyes. Make the deaf and the dumb to hear and to speak. Take all the swelling in their bodies away. Take that tumor away. HIV AIDS be healed in Jesus' name. Cancer, you are healed in Jesus' name. Also, you are healed in Jesus' name. Those who are paralyzed, I pray the power of the Lord will touch you right now. Rise up and walk in Jesus' name. Any part of the body that is dried up, withered, cannot move, I pray the power of the Lord will touch you right now. The power that never fails or preach in your body right now. You're healed. You're delivered. You're recovered. Your problems are gone. As you open your eyes today, right now, you see that miracle. Lord, confirm it in every life. Miracles of mercy. Miracles of love. Miracles by grace. Thank you, Lord. It is done. In Jesus' name we pray. It is done. I said it is done. You have your miracle right there. Your healing right there. Your freedom right there. Check it up. Confirmation is there with you.